I'm Jared. I work at Sigstar. I'm an engineer there. And before I show you any code, let me just explain why we even wrote this. Uh, we're working on building a business relationship intelligence platform, and we landed on a microservice architecture with Kafka as our message service, and it's event-driven. So anytime anything interesting happens, an event gets posted to Kafka saying something happened, and any of the services that care about that can uh, handle it, do whatever they need to do. Um, the pattern we're following is every microservice has its own data store. Um, so the way it all kind of worked out in practice is that all of the database writes are triggered by Kafka messages and all the reads are triggered by HTTP requests. So the services query each other for information that they need, but anytime they're writing stuff, it's triggered by a Kafka message. <clears throat> so we wanted to add Elixir to our tools and so we just decided to do it. I was one of the guys thrown into that fire and uh, so far we have two of our microservices written in Elixir and we use the Kafka EX hex, pack, hex package to do our communication and it, it works pretty well, it's pretty reliable but it has one big drawback and the impression I get is that this is not unusual behavior in the Elixir universe, but anytime anything goes wrong, it just crashes. And so if the Kafka server goes down, it crashes 10 times in a row as fast as it can crash, it hits the limit of crashing, and then the entire service crashes. Which for our purposes isn't great because we want to keep serving the data that we have already in our database to the other services. So um, we decided let's make a shared library to try to make our use of Kafka more resilient than Elixir. So I wrote this stuff after only having been introduced to Elixir a month previous, so it's probably not great. Um, and I'd love to hear any suggestions that you have. Uh, it's a gen server, basically. And you know, to be honest with you guys, I don't even know what the right terminology is. I come from an OO universe. So I'd say this is an, impl an implementation of gen server. Is that, is that how we say it? OK. It's a gen server. <coughs> Uh, it starts itself right here in start link, and it's got two um, basically public methods here. One of them is just check to see if the Kafka service is running. Um, it, it does applications, whoops, it gets the start of applications and just looks for uh, Kafka EX in the, in the running applications. Also, it checks to see if we have a running Kafka worker process. <clears throat> then we have this produce method. And uh, in Kafka terminology, um, producing is publishing a message to Kafka, and consuming is you know subscribing and receiving messages from Kafka. So this is a method that gets called method. This is a function that gets called um, anytime one of our services wants to send a method message to Kafka. And it's uh, got this error handling right in here <clears throat> where if it, uh, you know, if produce returns an error, it just waits for 60 seconds and then tries again. Uh, the rest of this is basically just implementations of gen server functions. When we start up, uh, the parameters we get passed are child specs, which are basically uh, what Kafka topics we're going to be listening to. So the way Kafka is organized, it's uh, by topic. Um, and then each topic contains a number of partitions, which is the way it handles sharding. So uh, you need to, when you create a topic, you tell it how many partitions you want and that the number of partitions is the maximum number of listeners that can consume that topic simultaneously. So 
When we start up, we pass in child specs, which is just all the topics we want to listen to. Uh, we start a worker process, which is the process that does the, the handles sending messages to Kafka. Then we get, whoops, we get our Kafka servers from the environment variable. It's just a comma separated list of servers. And we then uh, set that so that Kafka EX has access to it. Uh, then down here is where we start all the listeners. For each item in the child spec, we send ourselves a message to start child and then we return. So here we are handling all our messages. This is the start worker message. It starts a worker. Uh, the interesting bit here is um, we do process monitor. So we get a reference to the process that it starts. And when you monitor a process, if that process goes down at some point, then we, we will receive this down message. So this is where we handle Kafka going down. When Kafka goes down, the worker process crashes and the listener processes all crash. And we get down messages for each of those because we are monitoring those processes. <clears throat> uh, so if we are able, if create worker succeeds, great, we're monitoring it. If it's already started, then fantastic. We monitor it also. If it fails, um, we send ourselves the start worker message again after 60 seconds. We just try it again. Uh, this function here is handling start child. It's very similar to start worker, just for the listeners. Same idea. If it works, we save a reference to the process. We also save uh, the child spec in a map. And that is so that when this particular listener crashes, we get the process reference back. We can then use that reference to look up the child spec for the process that crashed so that when we restart it, we restart it using the exact same child spec. Uh, then down here, we've got the handler for whenever a process crashes. So we check the reference. If it's the worker, we send ourselves another start worker message. If it was a, if it wasn't the worker, then it must have been one of the listeners. So we send ourselves the start child message. Down here is just a little convenience for getting the worker ref, the worker reference, which we use way up here in um, the up function to see if we're if we're running and. Where were we? Okay, so this is the produce function here. This is where it gets a little nutty. <clears throat> um, first we see, is Kafka running? Great. Um, now what we have to do is lazy load the number of partitions for the topic which we want to produce to. Um, because of the way the partitioning works, the only time message order is guaranteed is within a partition. So if you have two events that you're sending to Kafka and you want to make sure that they will absolutely, definitely get processed in order, they have to go to the same partition. So the way you typically handle that is um, with a key. So you key your message off of, off of something that the receiver will understand and then we just select the partition by calculating the, the murmur hash of the message key and then uh, taking the modulo of that by the number of partitions. We're just choosing a partition number based on the key here. If there is no key, we just choose a partition at random. Then down here, we have to, because this uh, function is processing messages in batches, this is a list of messages. 
and all of those those messages might all have different keys. We basically have to uh, group all the messages by key and assign them to a partition and then send them each one partition at a time. So that's basically what's happening here. Then down here, finally we get to the actual produce message where we send them out. And uh, that's pretty much that. Any questions? Any any critiques? Um, even at a high level, is is this a, a smart way to handle the situation of trying to not crash all the time? Yeah. I have one question. So yeah. I see you're using dynamic supervisor. Yes. I think it's relatively new to Elixir. Okay. Um, I'm not very familiar myself. Can mm -hmm. you talk about sort of why you chose that? And how how it was using that module? Um, this is, you know, going back to some bad, some poor memory maybe, um, but whenever we start a, um, e each listener, and we have to have a, a separate listener for each topic, is running as its own process. And when you start those, you can add them to the application's regular supervision tree. Uh, but then, again, if one of those crashes, if Kafka goes down, the whole thing crashes. So we're, uh, we're basically using dynamic supervisor to sort of partition those processes out from everything else so that they can be allowed to crash without crashing everything else. So I guess one extra benefit for the dynamic supervisor, mm -hmm. uh, when you go to restart that process, uh, if with the normal supervisor, the spec would already be in there and so it would be I've no, not used Kafka in Elixir. Mm -hmm. every, I've used it in a few other languages, and every library I've ever seen, you don't have to handle that partition logic manually. Is the Kafka in the Elixir library just that low level? Yep, yep. It doesn't even handle the key for you? It is pretty low level. Okay. You, it, you have to choose your own partition. Um, if you don't, I'm trying to remember how this worked before. Yeah, because most library I've done it in a few different languages. Yeah. Every time you just hand them a key, you right. build it. So, okay, so it's just that yeah. level that it has a. Yeah. yeah. I guess I was usually using an official library. And right. I assume the Elixir one is not an official. I don't think so, no. Another question? Sure. Um, so, I, I sometimes struggle to test gen servers mm -hmm. because, right, there's just the state going on. Um, uh huh. Does this. Gen server have tests? Nope. Okay. <laughs> That's how you solve it. Yes. <laughs> it, is, it is heavily manually tested. Basically, uh, I spent a lot of time firing it up, then starting up, uh, I can't remember the name of the thing, the, the, the window that shows you all of the processes running. Oh, Observer. And, yeah, Observer, there you go. Start up Observer and then just randomly right click on different processes and shut them down and see what happens. That's cool. That is uh, how this got tested. I'll follow up then and say sometimes when I struggle to test the gen server, mm -hmm. something that helps me is extracting some of the complex logic into another module mm -hmm. that doesn't care about processes or state. Right? So if there's a single operation, maybe sending a um, or producing yeah. a message, mm -hmm. maybe extracting that into a separate module that you can just test because it's a yeah. normal function. You know, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I mean, it makes makes great sense for this produce method because it's kind of doing a lot of stuff here. Yeah, I think just general advice would be to just break out this into smaller yeah. things as, as much as possible. Because yeah, you have I think each of those like equal signs almost look like a nice little function. Thing, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, but just I'll talk a little bit about how some speculation on how you might test something like this. Sweet. This would be a really good. Thing to, okay. It wouldn't be true. It would uh -huh. be a really good thing to test with generative tests because uh, you have okay. certain properties that you care about, like mm -hmm. it doesn't crash the whole server. Yeah. Um, and you could just send it a bunch of random events mm -hmm. and see what scenarios it would crash the server. Okay. Right. Awesome. Right. The 
one downside is that if you do succeed and crash the server, your test will just plop down the board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can use it. There's no ways. Outside of the attack. The messages we put in the call are sufficiently random, but we get some good Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for your time, everybody. Yeah.